Hey guys, Steven here. Welcome to ProTech. Um, so today we're going to talk about the SIG P365 safety concerns that some of you have. Um, if, if you don't, if you don't uh, follow our channel, um, I am a firearms engineer. I worked for uh, a period of time at Knight's Armament Company and uh, then moved on to FN. Um, and I have worked on both long guns and short guns and some belt fed systems and uh, have gotten to participate in some other uh, interesting projects and suppressors, muzzle brakes, flash hiders, done a bunch on those. Um, and now I'm working on my second year as a privately contracted engineer. I'm also an instructor, firearms instructor. I've uh, been doing that for a long time. And um, I am also a, a just hobbyist competitive shooter. I've got small children right now, so I haven't been able to uh, invest uh, the, the amount of time it requires to get uh, uh, really, really good in that realm yet because I'm waiting on my kids to join me. So anyways, we're going to talk about the SIG P365. Um, some of you, a guy commented on our recent video, we just put uh, 8,500 rounds on this gun and put up an engineering review of it recently. Um, and a guy asked about the striker again. Um, now I'm, I'm all about data. Uh, I don't own stock in SIG. Uh, they don't pay me to do these videos, although they could. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't want your money, SIG. Um, this is, uh, uh, for all intents and purposes, one of the best, if not the best, option on the market right now for a micro size concealed carry pistol. Um, regarding safety, um, one user asked about the striker, the rear end of the striker. First, it was a striker tip. Uh, the military arms channel guy had an issue with a striker tip. Um, now it's the rear of the striker. A piece broke off on the on the uh, back side of the striker. So I want to spend some time talking to you about what uh, lines of safety has SIG programmed into this gun to uh, thwart that if that ever happens to you. So we're going to dive into it and talk about the design safety glasses. If you're going to take this, if you're going to take your slide apart, especially wear safety glasses. Okay. Um, so first and foremost, we're empty. Don't want to uh, be that 911 call that um, is a guy who shot himself in the leg because he was cleaning his gun. Make sure your gun's empty first. Okay, so we're going to disassemble this thing. I'm going to show you how to do it. I don't recommend really taking your slide apart aside from pulling your, your operating group out, uh, your recoil assembly, uh, your guide rod assembly out, and your barrel. Um, and then just brush everything down and put a little bit of lube on the outside of your barrel and, and a little bit on the rails and you're good to go. Uh, maybe a drop down on the, on the, uh, on the sear, the, the trigger sear. <clears throat> um, but anyways, you take a small flat blade screwdriver and you stick it right in here on the, the uh, my left side of the uh, striker sleeve and you just depress that a little bit and then you slide the back plate down so right like that sorry i might have done that off screen but i depressed that and i pushed this down then that comes off then the striker sleeve protrudes out the back of the gun and you can pull the entire striker assembly out okay so here's the striker assembly now let's talk about safety is it safe does it have uh, points of redundancy? Yes, it has a firing pin safety, okay? Which is right here, this little button, this little thing right here. That's your firing pin safety, okay? That interacts with, there's a tiny little spring. If you take that part out, make sure you don't lose that little itty bitty spring. Okay, that's the firing pin safety. What this does is it interacts with this little protrusion 
on the side of the striker, okay? Okay, and it rides in the gun like this. Like that. And it prevents the striker from moving forward towards the primer on the live cartridge until it is depressed. How does that get depressed so that the striker can move down the channel and fire the round? In your frame, in your chassis, in your chassis that is down inside your frame, you have this little lever right here on the side. Come on, focus. There you go, that little lever right there. There it is. When I press the trigger, see it rises up? From this angle. See that comes up right there? Push it back down one more time. Press the trigger. It comes up. When that comes up, it moves that firing pin or striker safety down so that that protrusion can pass on by it. That's safety number one. Okay, That's your main, uh, we'll call that your main um, normal operating safety. Okay, Then if you notice, <clears throat> if you take the, you can do a little experiment. I did this earlier. If you take the back plate off, assemble the gun and just with the with the back plate removed so you've got your firing pin safety in there and you've got your firing pin assembly your striker assembly in there okay and if you look underneath where that nameplate went or that that back plate not nameplate back plate went you can see the striker you can see the back edge of the striker you can see the trigger sear this middle piece right here and you can see how it interacts with the striker and one thing you can see is that this surface here this front surface right there that is the sear okay all right well if that's the sear and when I pull the trigger my trigger sear gets completely out of the way of this whole thing and this all, even this back portion, goes past it. What is this for? What function does this piece on the back of the striker serve? Okay. Well, um, I, I saw a picture of a striker with a broken piece on it. Um, where uh, something up here broke off, okay? So say that, little, say that little safety protrusion breaks off, or say the whole front edge of the striker uh, sear surface breaks off. Say that whole piece breaks off. Now, what stops the gun from going off? That right there that piece right there. That also, if that ever happens, that also will remove a considerable amount of uh, energy out of, and momentum out of the striker, and it will not have the amount of energy required to indent the primer and make the gun go off. So your gun will be essentially dead at that point if that ever happens. Um, uh, if, and if this part is manufactured properly, if it's, if it's metal injection molded properly and properly centered and the whole process is done and they, they even go so far as to, to nitride it, uh, at the end that gives it that really slick, lubricious uh, uh, coating and it's very hard. It's a very thin, very hard coating, talking like 70 Rockwell C. That's extremely hard, um, but very thin. It's like a it's like an overbuilt eggshell, if you will. Um, <clears throat> between all of that, they made a very safe striker assembly. So I doubt, I doubt that they'll ever. I mean, let's let's face it, guys. I mean, you're talking a big.
big gun company that's got a lot riding on this thing, okay? They can't afford to have a malfunction. They can't afford to have a failure uh, in the field, you know, because let's face it, we live in a, we live in a country where uh, lawsuits are really prevalent. So they have to, fix my focus there, they have to account for that. So that secondary surface, that secondary hook back there, will 99.9999999% of the time never be used. Okay, it won't do a thing. Okay, but if if this thing catastrophically fails in the protrusion that interacts with the striker safety or the firing pin safety, whichever you want to call it, breaks off, and the whole sear surface breaks off, that'll stop the gun from going off. <clears throat> so that's in a nutshell, and, and how you can prove that to yourself, you can line the gun up, you can look at where the sear is, you can look at where the striker is, and you can you can manually depress this thing and push depress the firing pin safety and push it past it and you can see that this rear hook has to go past the trigger sear surface right there in order for the firing pin tip or the striker tip to protrude out through the hole in the breech face right there and indent the primer so that'll tell you if you want reassurance for yourself, that'll tell you that that hook, that hook there, that second hook in the back, does just that. So I hope that helps you, um, guys. And and uh, one of our lines of income, and this is a shameless plug, uh, one of our lines of income is that we make uh, very nice holsters. Um, and I, I carry one every day, and and we've got lots of customers who do the same. Um, I make about 300 of these a year. This is called a Kybrid. It is kind of the best of both worlds between an all Kydex holster and a hybrid holster. So you've got the safety and consistency and uh, retention of an all Kydex holster, because notice we've got Kydex on both sides of the gun, and then you've got the comfort of a hybrid holster by this having this piece of premium horse hide attached to it. Now this one is molded to the side of my body. So when I put this thing on and I get it get it right there on my hip where I always carry it, it all but disappears on my on my side. And that's the biggest comment that we get from our reviewers. And then regarding safety, let me put my gun together really quick for you. Regarding safety You can see that it fully covers the trigger guard, and we even leave a little bit of space there on some guns when it when we can, on the magazine release, to prevent help further prevent that button from coming out, and then it covers the trigger guard on the other side and fully clears the magazine release, and that thickness of the kydex also helps protect it from being pushed. Okay, and then if you notice, we've got a, a very nice combat cut into this thing so you can get a full stacked thumbs grip on the gun in the holster, which is a requirement of a good holster. A good holster has to be safe first, it has to be robust so that it lasts, and it has to be comfortable. I don't care who you are, at the end of the day, if you want to wear this thing all day, every day, 365 days a year, comfort should be a requirement. Okay, ours have that. A lot of Kydex holsters have the safety and the repeatability and even the robustness, but a lot of them don't have the comfort, so that's where ours really shine. Okay? And on top of that, the materials we use, we use Kydex 100, that's the strongest grade of Kydex available. It's 40% stronger than normal Kydex. Um, and we've put these through the ringer, and some of our customers have too. We've got some really interesting testimonies. One guy wrecked his motorcycle. Uh, with his rig on. Not only did the Kydex 100 protect his gun because he went down on his hip, butt first, feet first, the Kydex protected his gun, but the horse hide dispersed the pressure across his hip, kept him from possibly breaking his hip as he slid down the road. Really cool story. We've got some more uh, that, that, are, that are interesting as well. But we make those 
Check them out if you would, please. They're a premium price, but it's also a premium product. And if you're tired of buying holster after holster, looking for the right one that has all of those key features, check us out. But anyways, guys, stay safe out there, and we'll see you next time.